This next kata is a very versatile concept to any kind of a straight arm attack when somebody comes at you. We'll use a hair grab as the form, but be aware that anything that has a straight arm in front of you is subject to what we're going to show you right here. Brian's going to grab me by the hair, whatever's left of it. I'm going to drive my hands up with my thumbs together. As I do, I'm going to secure his wrist with two C grips. Now, I'm going to grab like this, not like this. I'm increasing the pressure because I'm reducing the surface area of the grips that I have on his wrist. So even though my fingers look closed, the pressure is coming like these two little vice grips here. I do this because I want to be able to actually turn the bones in Brian's forearm into the position I'm going to need. So he grabs my hair, I reach up two C grips securing the bones in his forearm. I don't want him to let go of my hair. I want his hand nicely in that position because what I'm going to do is simply J step back, pull him through, lock on his upper arm, then begin to lift his wrist up and you get an almost immediate tap. Take another look at it. He grabs my hair. My first reflex is both arms go up and I C grip the forearm bones, not the hand. Then I'm simply going to J step back, which pulls him through, gives me this nice straight arm and he's way off balance. Squeeze tight with my upper arm and simply lift up on his hand. All the rest of my body is simply stabilized. And then I lift up on his hand. See it from another angle. He grabs the hair, hand goes up, securing both forearm bones. I'm not taking a preliminary step here. I'm simply J-stepping, pulling him through. Now I lift on the hand, and Brian taps quick because he's learned <laughs> about the pain on this stuff. So he grabs thumbs together, straight up the middle, secure both forearm bones. J-step back, pulling him through. Lift up on the wrist, there's your tap. From this position now, I'm going to lower him to the ground just like that. Now from this position, I can go to a lock you've seen before to pop the elbow, or I can apply the wrist lock, bend the arm, shift over, and I'm right back where I want to be in my cuffing position. Let's try that again, because Brian hasn't had enough pain here tonight. <laughs> he grabs with this hand, he grabs the hair, Thumbs together, jam straight up, control the forearm bones. J step back, pulling him through. Lock on the arm. He says, I'm a good guy. Simply drop to the ground. Force him to the ground. Now I'm in a position to execute several locks. For these purposes, I'm simply going to go to the wrist lock, spin around, come back up into my cuffing position, give me the hand, give me the hand. He's going to jail. Let's look at it from another angle. Sure you got it in you? Yep. Okay, from your angle, he grabs. Two hands come up. Lock on his wrist. J-step, pulling him clear through. Pull up on the wrist. Once he says he's a good guy, I'm just going to lower my body. This places him completely under my control and on his face, which is where we want him. Take my wrist lock here, bend the elbow, turning the thumb over as I come up into my cupping position. One thing to notice is keep your torso in contact with his torso as you make this turn. Give me the hand, give me the hand, click, click, we're done.